Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Quick hitter edition, breaking news out of, I guess you could say, out of the drug world, out of Hollywood, um, out of Detroit, uh, my hometown. So the most iconic African-American crime lord in history, Demetrius Big Meat Flannery, the founder and boss of the ubiquitous Black Mafia family, is out of prison, checked into a halfway house this week in Miami. He's been off the streets for 20 years and got out um, via a sentence reduction about a decade earlier than initially expected. Um there's a lot to unpack here. We're gonna, I think we're gonna try to do some longer form content both on uh, OG Pod and our Patreon members only, dealing with uh, Demetrius's legacy and what he built and what's next for him. Um, he's kind of a cottage industry, if you will, in terms of content and reputation and legacy. I mean, he's on the Mount Rushmore of. Uh, of, at least in terms of uh, recognizable, um, uh, you know, buzzy pop culture steeped crime bosses like Al Capone and John Gotti, you got to put Big Meech there, you know, even more so than Bumpy Johnson and Nikki Barnes and Frank Lucas and Supreme um, because. Meech was transcontinental. I mean, he was coast to coast. He was national. Um, he, he made Black Mafia family really literally the Walgreens of cocaine um, in the 90s and 2000s, where almost every major city had BMF franchises and subsets. Uh, it was a, a vision that, that Meech crafted, and this is based on my interviews with him, um, based on what Lucky Luciano and, and Meyer Lansky did with La Cosa Nostra. Um, he didn't want to just be a Detroit drug lord. He wanted to create the commission and, and be the boss of all bosses, which is, is what he did. And he had a 15-year run, which is almost unheard of. Um, and his legacy right now is... Complex. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give it give it to you like it is. Um, I don't want to get into too much of that complexity right now, but um, there are going to be people studying him and analyzing him and talking about him for dare I say hundreds of years. I mean, you know, Jesse James, Billy the Kid. Um, that, I mean, that's the type of mythology that that Big Meech has, and we all know the television show. Uh, uh, that's been on stars the last three, four years. Uh, full disclosure, I, I, I work uh, on, on the, uh, with stars, with, with 50 Cent and uh, the people behind the show, the, the docuseries where we got uh, season two in the works right now. And then we're about to go into season four of the scripted series. And uh, Demetrius has been somebody that's kind of been like, a Wizard of Oz as Black Mafia family has become more into the general public consumption sphere and has transcended just people that are interested in crime or rap or hip hop. Um, and he, he's, uh, he's, he's literally larger than life. I mean, he's him and his brother, Terry, shout out Southwest T, um, you know, their faces or people that are portraying them's faces are on billboards around the world. Uh, so it's, it's quite uh, daunting. And um, Demetrius has been like, you know, like behind this curtain during this ascension of his profile beyond again, the drug world and, and the hip hop community. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of people wanting to hear from him and, uh, and, and, and maybe encourage him to jump on social media. I, I'm of the belief that he's going to try to take as low profile as he can right now, which I know is the opposite of what people would expect. Uh, and uh, I'm going to report that he's 
planning on moving to Dallas. So uh, he's not planning on coming back to Detroit or going to Atlanta, which was his you know, adopted home um, when he left Detroit in the uh, 90s and, and kept, you know, kept the organization there, but went out to, to Atlanta. Terry went out to L.A. And uh, he's not planning on going back to either spots. Um, he's going to go to Dallas and, and try to, what I'm told, live under the radar. We'll see how, how that works. But um, it should be interesting to see how this all plays out. Demetrius Flannery, 56 years old. Uh, his reign as America's biggest drug lord was from 1990 to about 2005. Operation Motor City Mafia took him down in October of 05. So he's been locked up for 19 years. Took a plea in 07 on the day the trial was supposed to start. I was down at the courthouse when this all happened. And... You know, swallowed 30 years, did 19 of them. First step act legislation got some of the time sliced. Terry's been out for four years now. And uh, everybody who was a part of the Black Mafia family organization, which were, you know, hundreds of people, uh, everybody with the exception of Fleming Ill Daniels, who was their consigliere, their number three, who's doing a, a state murder rap, everybody that's been through the Operation Motor City Mafia bus from 05 with Demetrius out now and with um, PJ Buford out earlier this year, I think, who was uh, uh, one of Terry Terry Flannery's right hands and a guy that worked for Bad Boy Records. Uh, he's out now. Everybody from that case is now out 20 years later. Um, the last thing I will say is that... Uh, Demetrius and Terry, I, I want to be very careful how I say this, and I'm not, I don't want to uh, impugn their character with any unnecessary connections to what we're getting from the Puffy Combs story, but we know that there is a nexus point between Black Mafia family and Puffy and Bad Boy records. Uh, we've had DA agents and IRS agents on the OG pod telling us that uh, informants were telling them that uh, Terry and Demetrius had uh, funded Black Mafia, or sorry, Black Mafia family had funded Bad Boy Records, uh, financed their, their startup in the in the 90s, uh, spent a lot of time hanging out with Puffy. I, I don't think they had anything to do with the illegal activity that Puffy is being charged with. And I want to be that very clear. I'm not, I don't think that they're, they were involved in any sex trafficking or, or drug trafficking with him or um, exploiting underage people sexually. I don't, that, none of that. But just the natural dovetailing um, and knowing the federal government and knowing how they really like to jam people like Terry and uh, and Demetrius. It would just worry me um, that connection. So I, another thing we'll, we'll we'll keep keep an eye on. And again, not worried me for something that I did, but just because of the proximity factor, I, I wouldn't trust you where know, the government, uh, their point of view. And and I don't know if this is true, but. If, if they're looking to try to make a tie and, and make that public, uh, it's kind of easy pickings right now. Whether or not it's true or not, the narrative is kind of out there. You have these, these points of contact and people could kind of run wild with their imagination. But again, I, I'm, I'm going uh, down a rabbit hole. Only time will tell. Big Meech Flannery out of prison. We should be hearing from him soon and we look forward to it and we'll be reporting about it. Uh, Scott Bernstein, OG Pod, I'm out. Thank you.